about today's lunch. Our guest today, Nathan Turner, the book, I Love California. It's the second of probably many books to come. Um, so, a little bit of backstory, Nathan. I've known Nathan, geez, it's been about 12 or 13 years. Anytime he has some special event, you know, because he's very big in decorating and styles, he calls me, Robert, I need some of this and that, whatever, kind of situate. He pulls up, picks it up, and goes. And then I see some great things that has, he's been featured in over the years. If you guys didn't remember, uh, it was about, about eight or nine years ago, he was on that Bravo re reality show. Remember when the reality shows were extremely popular? The million dollar decorator and whatnot. Google that, check it out. I think those, uh, those episodes are still, yeah, can still be seen there in Bravo. Also, uh, not only author of uh, I Love California, his previous book, uh, five years ago, when we first hosted him here, was uh, Nathan's American, Nathan Turner's American Style. You gotta take a copy of that if you don't, put that on your coffee table, your culinary bookshelf as well, because there's some exciting recipes in there as well. Um, he's, a, he's a regular, on any, an, an entertaining um, expert on the Today Show. He uh, has designs, parties, and, and products and features in all major publications, including Architectural Digest, LA Decor, Vogue, Domino, Town and Country, House Beautiful. These are all these special things that he does all the time. And he uses our produce too, so we're like family. <laughs> he resides here in California, in Ojai, California. He was known for those pixie tangerines. If you see the cover here, he's at our grower there in Ojai. And I know a couple of you have been out there, but something I always look forward to in March on the Ojai pixie tangerine season. Do you, have something, do you have something in your backyard? Mm -hmm. yeah. you can see. If you live in Ohio, you've got to grow up in your backyard. Not that too. many, but... I'm yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, our guest today, excited to have him back here today, Nathan Turner. Thank you all for coming. This is really fun. Um, and I love anywhere where I can like pig out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit about me, Robert touched on it, but I really am a decorator. That's my, I call it my real job. Uh, but I grew up in a family where food was everything. It was so important to us. Um, I grew up in Northern California in the Bay Area, and my mother's side of the family has a cattle ranch near Stockton, Sacramento area. And every weekend, loads of time in the summer was spent there, and I think that being a part of an agricultural family really ingrained in me the idea of uh, knowing where your food comes from. Uh, and especially, I think, at the time when I was growing up in the late 70s and 80s, where um, the California food movement was really like full throttle. Like, you know, Alice Waters and Chez Panisse was 25 minutes away from where I grew up. And, you know, on Saturdays, my mom would throw us in the back of the Volvo station wagon and we drive up to Napa Valley and go to like, I called it the hippie co-op that I didn't even, where they sold organic produce, which nobody even called stuff organic that way. And, you know, as a kid, of course I would roll my eyes and like, why can't we just go to a grocery store like normal people? This is weird. Like we're just going and picking up a box of whatever like weird old food they have. And I was like, it's not old. It's like, it's not old. and what I, What's amazing about that is you grow up and you realize how you know lucky I was to be in that situation and, and be exposed to those sorts of things. Um, I won't tell my mom that though. Smoking, I do all the time. I credit her with um, really like showing us the importance of uh, you know knowing where your food comes, eating fresh, and we're like in the epicenter of that. I, I, I wouldn't go anywhere else. If I'm not at a farmer's market be on Sundays in Ojai, I'm with Melissa. And I can't even get everything I want at the farmer's market where we can here. Um, so growing up with you know food and the importance of food, I've been cooking since I was a little kid. And I joke that I've been cooking probably at an age where I should have had access to a gas range. <laughs> Try to get up early in the morning, as kids do, before their parents sometimes, and go downstairs. and turn on my cartoons and like, and then whoosh, 
with the guys <laughs> breaking you through. I learned pretty quick after a couple of singed eyebrows how to figure that out. Um, but you know, I started simple, and I, but I really had a passion for it. And um, I remember asking my parents what they would get me cookbooks. And I remember the very first cookbook I had was like kind of a long rectangular one. It was a kid's cookbook. And I looked through it in like 10 minutes, and I was like, that's boring. And it was just like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and can't get you know, um, celery sticks with peanut butter and rice. And, so, and I was like, no, I want to make real food. I want to make real stuff. And um, so fortunately, everybody in my family, was, they were cooks, and they really um, nurtured that part of me and let me cook and let me jump in. And probably the most influential people were my mother and my great grandmother, who I was lucky to, to know. She made it to 103 and was really like sassy to the end. She was really incredible. Um, as first generation, she was born in San Francisco, I think in 1909. Her, her parents were Sicilians. So there's such a major um, Italian San Franciscan influence in the way that I learned to cook from that side of the family. And one of my favorite recipes in, in the book is her cioppino. And cioppino is a seafood stew that's a very San Francisco-centric dish. Mm -hmm. And every family up there has their version. And this is ours. And I didn't deviate from it at all, because why would I? It's her mother taught her to make it. It's pretty amazing. Um, but that's what I love about food. And that's what I love about cooking, that I can put that dish together and, and get it going on my stove top and in you know no time my house smells exactly the way my grandmother's house smells. Mm -hmm. And it's the most yeah. you know direct sense memory connection you can have to somebody. And I love the fact that I am doing exactly what she did and I can teach my nephews and nieces how to make the same thing. And it's a connection and it's a connection and it's something that really is why I wanted to share my love of cooking and my love of food. And that's when I came up with the idea for the book. And so I had done a book previously with Abrams and it was about what, you know, my day job as a decorator and I had a shop for 14 years. And uh, so it was very uh, lifestyle centric, a lot of interior design. And um, when it was time for me to do a second book, my editor said, okay, let's get going on it. And she gave me, we talked about different ideas, and she said, okay, come back with an outline. And like two months went by, she's like, where's this outline? I thought you were, we were going forward. And then I finally had to just admit, I said, you know what, I don't like any of the ideas. What I really want to do is a cookbook. And she paused, and she's like, okay. She knew I cooked, she knew it was, there is some food in my first book, and she knew it was a big uh, part of my life. And she said, I, I totally get it, and I think we just have to figure out the angle, because people know you as a decorator. And um, we, so we just have to figure out the format and the right way to present it. And um, for me, being a decorator, yes, it's, one, it's a huge part of, of my life and what I do. But being a creative person and a person in the creative field, that's one aspect. And I think that having like a, a beautiful home and a home that's appealing to you is one element. But what I would say, what good is this great house if you're eating bad food in it, you know? And, that, and like, so it's a big picture. It's you know a lovely meal on the table. It's a, a table set with whether it's super simple or or you know. And you're not going to do that every night, but it's taking you know putting a little effort and and making a pretty table and uh, great food on the table and uh, your, your home that is your epicenter and should be your everything. And um, so that's how we started talking about what this book was going to be. And I started diving into early memories of food and, and what was, what I just was sharing with you about my family and what really connected me to food and to cooking. And um, my editor said, God, you really love your home state of California. And I said, I do. I, re I, re I think that the way I grew up and where I grew up influenced everything that I do. Whether it's the way I design at home, whether it's the kind of food I put on the table. Um, I think that we live differently here. And I think, yes, there's, you know, 
I, I, did a, I studied abroad twice when I was younger. I did an exchange program in Italy when I was um, in high school, and then I went and did a year abroad in college. And I could see the kids' excitement when I'd say, oh, I'm from California. And it's like, oh, I see. They're like imagining Baywatch and people running down the beaches of Santa Monica. And I was like, yeah, I'm from a different part of California. It's just as great. And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I really wanted to share that, the diversity of our state, and, and then diving further into things you, you realize, which I think a lot of us know, especially being where we are at Melissa's right now, that it is, the number is staggering of something like at least 80% of our the fruits and vegetables in our country. <laughs> <laughs> Is someone joining us? I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it comes from California. So obviously, like our what we produce in the state and what we need to the food food industry of America is incredible. And there was something that it was another thing I really wanted to share. So when we really started to break down the idea for the book, uh, we did it a many based the book. So when you see that there's different chapters with a menu, and, and really the kind of go-to things that I like making the, um, for Sunday lunch for friends in Malibu, or lunch at my mother's, and dinner at, dinner at home, and um, I decided to take those menus and allocate them to a, a part of California that means something to me. So it's very personal. It, it, it's a funny book in the sense that, yes, it's a cookbook, and we have, I think, 72 recipes, but it's kind of a travel guide, and it is um, a style guide as well, as far as tips for entertaining um, and, and setting tables and flowers and entertaining outdoors. So we broke it down into the three sections of California, which hopefully we just stay one state, because I know there's that crazy bill oh. in November to split us up into like all these <laughs> great things. I don't know how anyone feels about that here, but I'm like, just leave us alone. Um, we're the fifth largest economy in the world. We just like surpassed, I don't know, like someone major. Like, it's crazy what we, what we do and have here. Um, so it is cause for celebrating. Um, so yeah, I did Northern California, Central California with the Sierra Nevada, and Southern California. And um, I love when I look through the pages of the book at how diverse it really is. I was talking to Mary about, she was saying how cool it is that I didn't just show the like Southern California beach lifestyle which I did, but there are parts of Northern California that look like I'm in Maine and pulling oysters right out of the water. And the Sierra Nevada are incredibly beautiful with the mountains. And, and the thing that we all have in common though, we can live completely different lifestyles, is that we do all have in common that uh, a love of, of, of food and fresh food and a laid back way of doing things. And I know it's cliche, but it's true. We're, we. I think that people want to emulate that and they want to um, adapt that for themselves because I say in the very opening of the book that yes, this book is about my home state, but it's really about a state of mind. And it is about, like I said earlier, it's about putting a beautiful meal on a nice table in a pretty home, and the whole point of that is to gather and spend time with your family and your loved ones and your friends because that's what I was taught. It was that food is the best way to get your loved ones together and show them that you care. Um, so I can't wait for you guys to dive into the book and see what you think about, about it and hope that um, you get inspired to make some of the recipes or set some of the tables, some of the most um, fun I've had on my book tour is getting all the uh, tags on Instagram and seeing people making things or duplicating the flower arrangement or, or whatever part of it is, I, which I also say in the book that, look, you know, if you don't like to, if you don't know how to do flowers, then I have a couple tips on just like pick one flower and just put that down, this, the one single like white tulip and do the whole thing down the center of the table. Um, if you don't really, if you're not a big cook, um, then set a pretty table, and, and I've done things where something didn't turn out, and I just had a beautiful table set, so I just called in and did takeout Chinese, and everybody <laughs> had like the best night. So 
I just hope that um, something clicks and inspires people, and that's really why I wrote.